Hello and welcome to this video which is about navigating your project more easily using what's available to you in the channel settings window which is probably the longest video title I could have come up with at short notice. As your projects get larger, which they inevitably do, it becomes harder to navigate them. There comes a point where you sort of reach critical mass and it becomes painful if you don't use some of the facilities that are available to you in Cubase. So let's just take a look at the problem. So here's a project that I just started working on. And let's say you need to move from these drums here and you want to move to the group track that they're being sent to. Now, the, the way which is sort of intuitive to do is to either scroll all the way down the project and go, uh, where is it? Oh, it's, um, yeah, yeah, where, oh, it's there. There we go. It's the drum. I'm slightly hamming it up, but you get the idea. Or to do exactly the same thing, but in the mixer, which is often a little more difficult. And yet, seems to be the thing that uh, certainly I used to do quite a lot, and I've seen quite a lot. So you scroll across, and then again... Eventually you find it and then you click the E and then you're there. You don't need to do that anymore for two reasons, which I'm going to show you. So the first thing is the channel settings window. I would firstly, this isn't the, the tip, but I would make sure you've got always on top turned on. The reason being that otherwise, if it's not turned on, let's turn it back off again. If you click on another channel, it disappears. And then you have to click this twice because although it's active, it's there, or you can use a keyboard command to cycle through the windows, but either way, it's a bit painful. It's much better if you instead either right click or two finger tap and pick always on top there. And then as you change channels, you can see that we're keeping the window open. That's much nicer already. So already your life's easier, but there are more tools. So this is the first thing is you can just change channels like this. So if you're going through that early phase of soloing a track, listening to it, maybe doing some EQing, finding out what's right and what's wrong about it, and then unsoloing it and then moving to the next one. It's much easier if you do it here than if you do it there. Although if you've got always on top on, then you know it's, it's easier maybe to do that, but then you're gonna end up on these controls. Anyway, make use of these if they work for you. So that's the first tip. Now, the second tip involves some other controls here in the, in the header. So the first thing is, if you want to go straight to the output channel that any track is using, so whether that's a group, whether that's directly to the stereo out, et cetera, anything like that, this is the guy for you. So earlier on, you saw me hamming it up, searching for it, and it's a bit of a pain. If you click this, you just go straight there. So you can see we've moved to the bottom of the project. We've selected the track here and we're on the group track so we've just gone straight there everything's nice and easy that's great so we can go straight there but getting back you might think well i've got to scroll back up aha uh -huh, you don't because everything that feeds this group here is shown if you click this it shows you in this case the four tracks which are feeding it so we've got kick snare and two overheads i can just go back there like that magically we're back there so navigating your session just with that is much, much nicer. Now, the next one is you can also see these. So on top of this that you've just seen, the go to output, you can actually see those. So we can show the output chain. Now, this can be interesting, particularly if you're using nested uh, group tracks where they, they feed each other, etc. Or, you know, you've got maybe a subgroup for your overheads, which is then feeding the, the drum group. And then that's going somewhere else as well. Just click this and we can see you've got these here. So you've got quick access. So often I find in a mix, once I've made a few tweaks with the channels, maybe I just want to pop down and just adjust the group track. So, you know, maybe I've done a few things here. So I've been working on these. So the individual channels on the drums, and then maybe I want to tweak the drum overall. And you think, oh, you know what? I might want to turn that down again. While it would be nice and easy to navigate to it like that, you can do it without changing effectively your focus. So we can go, I'll do that. And then I'm still on these drum tracks here and then I can move between them so I can go to the snare and, and change that, etc. So this makes it much easier. And also if you then think, you know what, I'm gonna go to the drum group and do some proper work, you can just click the E there and here we are 
we're in that as well. So that's the same kind of thing as doing the go to the, the target, etc. It's horses for courses. You'll find your work one way with one, one way with another, etc. But it's it's nice to have that available. Again, we can just pop back to the channels which are feeding it like that. And we're back where we were with this in the same mode that it was. So interestingly, if we go between these, if we're making use of the channel strip effects, which certainly I do quite a bit, particularly because quite a lot of my clients have only got the uh, the included effects. They they haven't bought thousands of pounds of effects that I've wasted. I spent my money on. Then, you know, often it's useful. And there's there's some good stuff to be had in here as well. But that's by the by. Say, it's nice to be able to navigate. So if you spend a bit of time working with these buttons and these controls here and turning this on, you'll probably find as soon as your project goes above sort of the mid-20s in terms of tracks, it will really pay off in terms of navigation. So hopefully that's made your life in Cubase easier. So these are certainly not new features in Cubase 12. They've been around for a good few versions. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, but I would wager some of these probably appeared when the new Mix console appeared, and they've certainly been around since maybe Cubase 10. Anyway, as ever, I hope you found that useful. And if you have, we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.